Uh, now we are going after species that have uh, more than or expanded octet and what if they have five electron charge centers. Example of that I'll go after is uh, PCl5, phosphorus pentachloride. Now if you look at phosphorus only, phosphorus is group five, so I have five brainless electrons. And then you have five chlorines, each one of them is sharing one of its electrons. So you have five electrons from chlorines. Total of 10 electrons are surrounding phosphorus. If you divide it by two, you have five pairs of electrons or five electron charge centers. So then to draw a shape like this, uh, I will put phosphorus in the middle. I will put chlorine with a single dashed line, another chlorine up another chlorine below and then all these three chlorines are, are on the same plane I'm going to put a wedge with dashes to say one chlorine is coming to you uh, away from the plane of paper one is going inside the plane so I put a solid wedge then I will make sure the elements on the edges have their octet only the species in between uh, I mean the, the phosphorus can have expanded octet in center chlorines are on the edges so they should have their octet you can do total number of electrons and then if you do that you will come exactly to number of electrons I have used each dashed line represent a pair of electrons now the bond angles uh, there is a triangle up here with a solid wedge dash wedge and this solid here this is 120 degrees away from each other. And if you look at uh, the attachment between chlorine, phosphorus, chlorine, these are 90 degrees. I'm also going to do hybridization of species like this. I have one, two, three, four, five attachments. So I'm going to mix my atomic orbitals S. S has only one orbital. P has three orbitals, P sub X, P sub Y, P sub Z. Now D has five, I'm only going to use one of them because I only need one, two, three, four, five attachment. So the hybridization of phosphorus in this case is sp3d uh, hybridized. You should also realize these are all single covalent bonds. So you have five sigma bonds going. So I have total of five sigma covalent bonds. And this letter here is Greek alphabet representing sigma, which is a single covalent bond. Now I'm going to give you another species that has five electron charge centers, but you will have one of them as lone and then four bonding. So for that, I go to the next slide. Now I'm under the same electron geometry, but this time I have one lone pair. The shape will change and its name is distorted tetrahedral or seesaw. Uh, the equipment you use to play one person sits on one side the other person the other side so for this example I go after sulfur tetrafluoride then again I do my electron uh, bookkeeping for the central element which is sulfur group six six valence electrons four electrons borrowed or shared from fluorines total is 10 electron then again divide by two so we still have five electron charge centers, expanded octet. I put my sulfur in middle. Now I have one lone pair of electrons. I have one attachment up, one attachment down in the same plane of paper. One fluorine that is coming to you with a, uh, wedges as dash and one solid wedge that is going inside the plane. I saturate fluorines with electrons, so they are octet. Now this is uh, 90 degrees. The angle between these two is 90 degrees. This is uh, about less than 120 because of the lone pair. Remember, it has stronger repulsion. So this, this lone pair is pushing a little bit more onto the bonded fluorines. So this angle here, I'm going to draw it in red and say, look, this, between these two fluorines is about 117 or 18 degrees, 17 degrees. 
the hybridization still is one, two, three, four, even the lone pair is included, it's sp3 dehybridized. Now I give you one other example of a seesaw. You could have a polyatomic ion such as I F4 1 plus. Now if you have a case like this, then again do valence electrons of iodine, which is group seven, seven electrons four electrons more from fluorines. If you are a positive entity, you should subtract one from the central, total number of central electrons. So minus one electron because of the fact you are positive cation. Seven plus four is 11, take away one, you still 10 electrons. 10 electron divided by two, you are five electron charge centers. So now you have the same shape as above, you have a iodine in the center with expanded octet and you will have your fluorines exactly identical as the shape above put octet electrons for fluorines on the edges the shape is complete uh, the last thing to do since it's polyatomic put it in a bracket indicate your charge Okay, so electron geometry is still trigonal by pyramidal. The shape has changed because of the fact I have a lone pair of electrons. Now what happens if we have two lone pairs of electrons, but we still have five ECC? Now the shape I'm saying becomes T-shaped and we have to look at it so we can appreciate that. Uh, for a case like this, I go after ClF3, chlorine, uh, trifluoride. Let me do chlorine's uh, number of valence electrons being surrounded by. Seven valence electrons, I, I belong to group seven, halogens. Three more electrons borrowed from fluorines or shared. Total is 10, divide by two. I still have five ECC. Now I put my geometry going, so chlorine is in the center. Remember, electron geometry was sort of, uh, it's still trigonal by pyramidal, but this is what happens, fluorine, fluorine, fluorine. And the other two that was a solid wedge and a dash wedge are becoming lone pair of electrons. So if you look at this shape, this is T-shaped. It looks like letter T. Then let me saturate my fluorines with their lone electrons, pairs of electrons, and it's totally okay. Now hybridization, lone pairs are participating. One, two, three, four, five you still sp3d. Finally, I'm going to give you same electron geometry, trigonal bipyramidal, except this time I have three lone pairs and two bonded pair. For example, like that, I go after I3, one minus, tri iodide ion. Now there are three iodine, the, one of them is going to be the central element. So for that, I have seven electrons and you are going to borrow two more from the iodines on the edges, so plus two electrons. The minus one indicates you have borrowed one total. Seven plus two plus one is 10. Divide by two, you still have five ECC. So iodine in the center, then you have iodine up here, you have iodine down here, and that uh, trigonal planar is going to be your lone pairs in this fashion. And then we put it in a bracket. The shape of the molecule is a line, it's a linear. The bond angles between the two iodines is 180 degrees. The hybridization of the central iodine is one, two, three, four, five. So it's sp 3 dehybridized. So these are the shapes related to 5 ECC.